Hey, welcome back to the Craftomatics channel. I'm Kat, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Gentle Waves Knit Blanket. This is a really easy pattern, a great pattern for beginners who are ready to move on from garter and stockinette stitch and ready to start using a basic increase and decrease. I'm going to show you today how to make this swatch using two scraps of yarn that I have left over from my big blanket. These are both Karen Simply Soft in Sunshine and Pistachio. All you need to make this project is some yarn, a pair of needles to fit your yarn. I'm using US size eight, five millimeter needles, and I'm using a circular needle right now. You could also work your swatch in straight needles. You're gonna need a pair of snips to change colors. Highly recommend using some stitch markers to make your swatch, you'll only need one. A tapestry needle to weave in your ends, and I like to keep a repair needle or crochet hook around just in case I drop a stitch. We're gonna start with a long-tailed cast on in any multiple of 30 stitches. So for our swatch, we wanna cast on 60 stitches and this is a long-tailed cast on. So I'm gonna use about a half inch per stitch. So I'm gonna grab about a yard of my yarn and then I'll go ahead and tie my slip knot. And I want my tail with the end facing towards me and my working yarn, which goes back to the ball, behind me, away from me. To do your long tail cast on, if you've never done this one before, you're gonna start by tensioning your yarn like this. So I'm gonna do that again more slowly. Index finger and thumb go inside the yarn, pinch it with your bottom two fingers, and then pull up. You should have a V shape like this. So I have the loop, the tail, going around my thumb, and then back to my ring and pinky fingers and my working yarn is looped around my index finger and then going back underneath my ring and pinky fingers. To do a long tail cast on, you're gonna go underneath the yarn closest to you and up by your thumb so you're in the middle of that loop. Then go over and around the first string, the first piece of yarn in the loop over your index finger. Pull it through the whole of the first loop towards you, up, and then let go, pull snug but not tight. That's one, let's do it again. Set up, underneath and up, the loop closest to you, over and towards you for the loop closest to you on your index finger, pulling that loop through the first loop, let go, snug but not tight. So we're gonna do this until we have 60 stitches. I'm gonna place my stitch marker every 30 stitches. So for my swatch here, since I'm only doing 60 stitches, I will place my marker once I hit 30 stitches. If you're new to knitting and you've seen a lot of people online just do a really simple cast on where you only go over the thumb, I don't recommend using that unless you're working to add stitches in the middle of a pattern. And the reason for that being, as you, if you've tried it, you already know, those stitches are really hard to work into. The long tail cast on may be a little bit more tricky. It may be a little bit more time consuming, but this is knitting and we're not in a hurry. And ultimately, it will make it so much easier to work into that first row that it's totally worth the extra bit of time and effort. I'm using a crochet stitch marker. You can use whatever stitch marker you have. If you don't have any stitch markers, you can use like a paper clip or anything that'll just stay put on your needle. I like to use the crochet stitch markers, one because I also crochet um, and this works for both, but especially because if I end up forgetting to take it off at the right point, it's not a big deal. It's really easy to pick it up and move it even in the middle of a row. Always recommend counting your stitches before placing a marker or before deciding that you're finished, just to double check. Turns out my original tail for my long tail cast on was a little bit too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim it, leaving about six inches remaining. And my extra waist is only about 10 inches or so. So now that I'm all cast on, I'm ready to set up. So I'll turn and begin my first row. The first row for this pattern is really easy. All you're gonna do is knit 
and knit and knit and keep knitting all the way across. Turn and begin row two. Row two is also nice and easy. You're gonna purl every stitch all the way across. Turn. And now we're ready to begin row three. So row three is the row that actually makes our wave pattern. It starts with an increase, then a straight section, a decrease, and then another straight section, and then goes into an increase. And this will repeat over every set of 30 stitches that you do. So to do our increase, this is very, like the most basic increase you can possibly do. You're gonna knit the first stitch, and then you're gonna yarn over. That's it, that's your increase. Do it again, knit, yarn over, one more time, knit the next stitch, yarn over. That's it, you're done with the increase. Knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, split the yarn, there we go. Now I'm gonna go into a decrease section and we're gonna knit two together. So to knit two together, look at your next two stitches. You're gonna insert your needle as though to knit, but through both stitches. Yarn over and pull through just like you would for a knit stitch. That's it, that's a knit two together. We're gonna do that six times. So that was once, twice, three times, four, five, six. And everything in this pattern is like a multiple of three or a multiple of six. So now we're gonna knit six again, straight. One, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six. And I have three stitches left, that's correct. I'm gonna do an increase here, but I'm gonna yarn over first. So yarn over and knit one. Do it again, yarn over, knit one. One more time, yarn over, knit one. And that is it for each set of 30 stitches. We're gonna do it again. And this is why I highly recommend using a stitch marker and placing it every 30 stitches because it helps you keep an eye on where you are. So if your counts are off, you know which set of 30 it happened in. So now we're gonna start it all over again. Knit one, yarn over, do it two more times. Knit six, two, three, four, five, six. Now decrease for six. So that's knit two together six times. One, two, three, oops, four, five, six, whoops, cut a little extra there, six, there we go, knit six straight, one, two, three, four, five, six, I should have three stitches left and I do. This is my last increase section, I'll yarn over, knit one, do it twice more, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, one. And that's row three. You can already start to see the curves beginning to form within the pattern. Turn your work and you can do row four. Purl every stitch all the way across. You do need to be a little bit careful on this row. Make sure that you don't accidentally drop any of those yarn over stitches, those are the easiest ones to drop. 
because they're pretty loose on the needles. Turn your work and you're ready to start row one all over again. I've now done two full rounds, rows one through four in sunshine yellow. And you can see my increase is the peak. My decreases create that trough. And there's it in the middle of it. So it's a little bit more obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my color. So to change my color, it's pretty straightforward. I like to do it at the end of a row four, but you can really do it whenever. I'm gonna cut my yarn, leaving about a six inch tail or a little bit longer so I can weave that in later. A trick to your yarn, wind it around, pull tight, go underneath where you just wound around, pull up a little loop. Now it's easy to undo, but it stays put pretty well. I'm gonna switch to this pistachio color. And you can see I did the same thing. Boop, now it's undone. So the way that I like to do this is I match up the ends of my tails so they'll end up being about the same length. And I'm gonna hold them in place with my bottom couple of fingers on my right hand, holding my right needle. Sometimes I like to wrap it around my finger like I'm doing here. Now this row, and this is why I like to switch after a row four, is because row one is straight knitting. So I'll go ahead and just insert my needle, yarn over, and pull up my loop knitting all of my stitches. Once I've knit a handful of stitches here and I feel like the yarn is pretty secure, it's not gonna come undone, get my work nice and stable and flip it over. I'm gonna grab my two tails and just tie a single knot. And that should be enough to hold it just fine while I finish the project. Continue working in your new color until it's time to change again. So at this point, I'm working on a row three, which is my wavy round, and I lost track of where I was. So here's how you check. You know everything in this pattern is worked as a multiple of six. So even though there's three increases at the beginning, starting at my stitch marker, it's going to be six stitches because it's knit then yarn over. So, and three times, so that makes six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I know I have to work six plain knits. One, two, three, four. So that means I have two to go. You can also check if you're working on your decrease section, they do look different on the wrong side of the work, on the purl side of the work. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. Oops, six, there's my six one, two, three, four, five, six, those would be my decreases. Do you see how much wider they are across my needle than the other plain purl stitches and the other plain knit stitches? You can also see that it's actually doubled. It's thicker here on my purl bump than it is everywhere else. So that's how I can tell where my decreases are. So if I lost track while working on my decreases, I would flip my work over and try to figure it out this way. This is also really helpful if you've been working and you realize that somehow you don't have the right number of stitches, which I have definitely done. So keep an eye out for that. And remember, you can always use something, uh, I like a repair needle, but you can also use a crochet hook or even just your needles if that's all that you have to make any changes, to make any adjustments. If you notice that you made a mistake a couple rows down, you can always get to that stitch, undo it, and then fix it back up correctly. So I've now finished my third round of my four rows, and this is plenty to make a swatch and just figure out what it's going to measure from peak to peak. So I'm gonna go ahead and bind off on my swatch. As a reminder to bind off, the basic bind off is to do two knit stitches. And now use your left needle to go purl wise into that first stitch that you knit and pull it over the second stitch, and that binds it off. Do it again, knit a stitch, pick up this one, bring it over this one, so pick it up in the front, use both needles to pull it through that second loop. Repeat all the way across, there is no need for any sort of fancy bind off on this, the regular bind off is gonna work just fine.
try to keep your binding off stitches nice and loose. That will allow them to conform to the curve and the wave of the pattern just a little bit better. You can remove your stitch markers whenever you get to them. They'll also fall off if you just ignore them. When you get to your last stitch, go ahead and cut a tail about six inches so you can weave it in. And then just pull all the way out. Done. Because this is just a swatch, I went ahead and trimmed my tails instead of weaving them in because it's a swatch and I'm never going to weave them in. You can see that the pattern there, I've got my really nice wave, I've got my really nice curves, little eyelets in the middle, little eyelets on the ends. What I want to measure to help me figure out how big I want my blanket and how big to cast on at the beginning is to measure from the center of one peak to the center of the next peak. You can do this in either direction. It's not super important which one. So I'm gonna measure from my peak to my next peak. One, two, three, four, five. It's just about five and a half inches. You wanna measure from the center of these two knit stitches, right? There's two knits in a row here, centered on all the eyelets. So you wanna measure from the center of that. So from the edge over, if I smooth it out a little bit, going to give me about five and a half inches. If I go the other direction, there's a half inch. One, two, three, four, five and a half inches on both of my peaks. So that is the number that I will use for my calculations. On my little scrap piece of paper here, I know that five and a half inches is equal to the peak to peak. And that was 30 stitches. So if I want to calculate how wide and how many stitches, I just need to know how many inches I want. So in this case, I wanted to make a baby blanket, which needs to be greater than or equal to 36 inches wide or three feet wide. So if I want it to be 36 inches, I need to divide by five and a half to figure out what my multiplier is, right? So I want five and a half inches multiplied by some factor, I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna call it X and I want to end up with 36 inches. So to solve both sides, all we have to do is divide by five and a half. I'm not doing that in my head, I'm going to use calculator. Don't make fun of my old calculator. 36 divided by five and a half is 6.54 repeating. I have to have a multiple of 30 stitches, so I'm gonna round this up to seven so that means my factor is gonna be seven. So if I take my five and a half inches and multiply it by seven, that gives me a final width of 38 and a half inches. Now to know how many stitches I need to cast on, well, I'm just gonna use the exact same factor. My factor was seven. And well, if it, one peak to peak is 30 stitches, and it's five inches, all I have to do is take my 30 stitches and multiply it by the same number seven, which gives me 210 stitches. That is the number of stitches that I will cast on. You can use this math to figure out exactly how many stitches to cast on, regardless of how wide or how narrow you would like to make this pattern based on your swatch. If you don't meet my gauge, that's okay because you can do your own math and know that it's going to come out correctly. If you do meet my gauge, you can also go to my blog post all about this pattern, which includes the written out pattern, along with a small table, which details cast on numbers based on the size blanket that you'd like to make. Thanks so much for joining me today to make this Gentle Waves blanket. I hope that you go forth and make some beautiful crafts with this pattern. If you do, you can tag me at Craftomatics on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. If you want to see more patterns and tips like this one, make sure you check out my website, craftomatics.com. You can also follow me at Craftomatics on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.